What's up everybody? DH Thorn here. Started a new grimoire. This one kind of goes over the basics. Things that I don't necessarily work with, but things that I want to have recorded. I'm actually going from the back of the grimoire and working my way to the front. I'm doing this so that I can include my charts and my fundamental information not worrying about where it's going to be or having it pop up in the middle of the book or something. So you'll see I have my candle color correspondences. I have my uh, basic planetary associations. And I have, of course, uh, some symbols and things I'm going to be adding. I started with uh, the one I personally like, the Unicursive Hexagram, which you can, of course, augment with a pentagram, as uh, Alistair Crowley basically did by using a flower to represent humanity. As I'm writing in this grimoire, I'm thinking about all the other grimoires that I have, the ones I've written for myself, the ones that I have written for everyone else, my beloved, very popular Shadonomicon, of course, my Become the Maelstrom. And there's a question that I get asked from time to time, and I want to make sure it's very clearly answered. One of the things I'm asked frequently is, Thorn, should I memorize what is in your grimoires, or any grimoire? Should I memorize the incantations, the invocations, the dedications, the initiations. Should I memorize all that poetry? How much of it should I memorize? Or should I simply recite it by reading it out of a book? Should I improvise it based on what I remember but not worrying about being exact? Well, while I don't think there's a wrong answer, what I think you need to remember is that the objective is not to say the words. The objective is to feel the words. The objective is to allow yourself, especially with an invocation, to invoke the energies behind the symbols of the words. So if you get the words wrong, it's not like in pop culture magic where there's magic words. It's not like an army of darkness where if you don't say every single syllable exactly right, you'll open a portal that will doom mankind. No. Chances are, saying the wrong words doesn't matter. What comes out of your mouth, although important on some levels, almost comparatively to what's going on internally, almost doesn't matter. So long as the intention is pure. And I know there's some mages who will poo-poo the, it's all intention, I do agree. Um, intention is very important. But intention doesn't make up for callous mistakes, for ignorant mistakes, for wanton carelessness. Intention only matters so far. If you're just simply too lazy to get it right, then that's going to show. Your rituals are going to suffer. Your manifestations are going to be weaker, fewer and farther between. Instead of winging it. Sometimes you must absolutely recite or memorize it. Now, when something is memorized, it has been ingrained into our psyche and into our mind in such a way that it may have completely lost its impact. The very first time you heard a poem or uh, an axiom, something profound, 
well, that profundity will be lost upon you once you have memorized it sufficiently. It will just become a string of words and sounds that you utter. So the feeling of the profound nature of that sequence may be lost. However, it can be replaced, in this case, by the subconscious knowing that by reciting these words, we are returning to that place of energy and intention. This is very useful. It is why certain rituals are repetitive in nature. It allows our conscious mind to step aside. And instead of worrying about the words, our mind is preoccupied with them until it tunes out and it allows us to enter a trance of sorts. Now recitation has the advantage of being able to get the words more accurate. It allows you to not memorize them. It allows you to be impacted by them much more strongly each time than if you memorize them. However, in order to read, you're going to have to engage your conscious mind at least a little bit. There's nothing worse then when I'm doing a ritual and I'm using music on YouTube, usually it's YouTube, it's the worst offender because I have to use my phone. And I'm not about to subscribe to YouTube and give them any money and give communist China my best regards because YouTube is deeply embedded in Chinese politics, or I should say deeply connected. I'm not interested in giving Google any more money at the very least. So rather than do that, I will, of course, keep my phone and my account free. But, of course, that means I get ads. Dr. Squatch. Ugh, Dr. Squatch. I don't even get the Raid Shadow Legend stuff. It's always Dr. Squatch. Nothing worse than when you are into a trance and you have your playlist going and you forget to select a long song and it jumps to another song and there's a five minute Dr. Squatch soap ad that yanks you completely out of whatever trance you're doing. Now, it doesn't always matter. There's plenty of times where that happens and I just laugh it off and sometimes I leave it because it doesn't matter. But the same thing happens if you find yourself needing to consult your grimoire in between steps or to recite things. It's important, then, if you are going to use your grimoire for recitation, that you keep it simple, easy to read, decorative, neat, and inspiring to look at. It's imperative, then, that it shouldn't be difficult to find your way around. And it's also imperative, in my mind, that any ritual that you're going to perform should be transcribed into your own grimoire or journal. Because your own grimoire or journal will have a lot more power than simply picking up even one of my great books and reading from it. If you reach into your grimoire, this is the one I have with a great... Uh, although short still, because I'm a little lazy and I don't write everything, um, set of invocations. So you can see here, I keep it neat. I keep it fairly easy to read. Sometimes I'll get a little decorative. And this book is nice and light. It's easy to hold. Of course, the first one in the book And so I'll, if I feel the need or the intuitive sense that what I should do is take this book out and use it in ritual. Then I will make sure that this book is properly consecrated, is properly empowered. And I don't just crack it open and read out of it. 
I perform. Notice the word perform when we say we perform a ritual. We perform the ritual. So some of you will open up your grimoire. And you'll say, Lucifer, O Lucifer, last star of the risen morning, first star of the fallen night. Others will pick up their grimoire and they will say, Lucifer, O Lucifer, last star of the risen morning, first star of the fallen night, I call you liberator, I call you light bringer, I call you rebel. They're performing at that point. They're imbuing their words with reverence. They're imbuing their words with meaning and power. Now others will intone. Now intonation is of course a little different. Intonation implies that what you're saying is not simply being said with your mouth. It is echoing into the astral. This requires a certain amount of combination of concentration. Often you extend things, perhaps the vowels, you say them slower usually in a monotone, because you need the individual sounds to resonate. Lucifer, oh Lucifer, last star of the risen morning. And that's also acceptable. Now when I did that, I would be feeling the vibration of those words echoing throughout my astral space, if there is one in my mind. And if not, I still feel, I feel it in my throat chakra, I feel it coming through. Lucifer, I feel it, like right here, right where your voice box is, of course, but I feel it. Lucifer, instead of Lucifer or Lucifer, oh Lucifer. Now, in a way, it is easier to do those things when you have your grimoire in your hand and you're reciting. Because it is possible to read in such a way that your conscious mind is preoccupied with the act of reading and your subconscious mind is able to trance and do what it needs to do. Most of you who are avid readers know that if you read at any kind of pace, let's say you're reading a novel, at some point you stop seeing words and instead those words become pictures in your mind. They become ideas in your mind. The words on the page vanish. It's like you're dreaming a little bit. It's a very interesting state. Well, that state is a gazing state. That state is a trance state. The same thing can happen when you're doing your rituals. So Leslie, what about improvisation? Well, I'm going to tell you that in a great number, if not the vast majority of rituals, especially the ones that I have posted online, I'm using the improvisational method. When I contact a spirit, unless I'm feeling in a funk and I'm unable to make that contact already, I will simply know that it is time to work with that spirit because they're already talking to me a little bit. And when I go into the ritual, I'm confirming that contact and I'm empowering it with magical ritual and the various things that I do. And I use improvisation, intuition. And I speak what is in my heart at the time. But improvisation sucks if there's nothing in your heart. So if you're not in the proper mindset, mood, mentality, whatever, knowing what to say can be as obnoxious as trying to hold a conversation with someone you don't like. <laughs> trying to find things to say. Nice weather, huh? So whichever one you use, you'll notice that there's one thing that I keep coming back to. It's not what you say, it's the feeling. The feeling is imperative. If you do not approach this work with feeling, what are you doing? 
You're not brushing your fucking teeth. You're talking to a god. You don't need to have feeling when you're squeezing your toothpaste out. You don't need to have feeling when you're... But you must have reverence and feeling when working with the spirit world, when working with magic, whether there's a spirit involved or not. As I said in one of my last videos about sacredness, if you're not keeping it sacred, what are you doing? And if you can't feel that reverence because maybe you're a little burnt out or because there's other things on your mind, maybe it's best to skip it or wait for it to come to you. I can tell you, without any shame, that with all of the crises going on in the world, my attention has been shifted largely to that. A great deal of my interest has to do with the machinations of the world. Ranzael is near and dear to me as a spirit. Though he is a shadow, he has had the largest singular impact on my conscious magical practices. And Ranzael, if you have read Shadonomicon, you know that this is a spirit of Machiavellian nature. And so I look at the world and I see the things going on, and so that's where I am. I'm very focused on those things, which unfortunately has a very grounding effect on my magic. I haven't had the inspiration or interest to do anything more serious than a candle spell or an incense offering. I haven't spoken to spirits like King Paimon in a little while. Even Malfas, one of my closest goetic spirits, has been rather vacant. It's almost like I've closed the curtain a little bit. And I can tell you that when I do ritual now, I use this. I use this. I use every trick there is. Not because they're not there. Not because they're too far. But because I need that to inspire me. I need that to give my conscious mind something else to do. Although I am a master at empty-minded meditation, at self-awareness in meditation, sometimes that's still not enough. Because even when you're not thinking, your intention is not to do magic. Your intention is to follow the ways of the world. But sometimes we have to remember that that intention is not really our intention. That's our ego talking. Our ego is saying, yeah, but, but look at that shiny over there. I'm scared of it. Look at, the, look at the, the riots. Look at the social unrest. Look at this. Look at that. I'm scared. Look at the COVID. Your root chakra is acting up and you're scared. Or you're feeling passionate and angry. Your, your sacral chakra maybe is a little bit fired up your heart, your solar plexus. You want to act. You want to do things. Again, feeling. If your feeling is not into it, if your feeling is not aligned with what you're doing, it's difficult. And so the question about recitation, memorization, and improvisation is always 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 answered by feeling if you cannot know what to say because your intuition is off because you're distracted memorization won't help you then either if your heart is not into the work none of these will work however recitation reading from a grimoire especially one that you have poured energy into that you've taken the time to draw the pages not just write them this is a work of sacred art you took your time if it takes you five years to fill a book like this because every page takes you a day that book has incredible power i've only filled maybe 15 pages of this grimoire and when I put it down on my altar, it hits like, and I've said this before, like an earthquake. 
It feels good in my hand. It inspires me. And the mood shifts ever so slightly. So apply that. Apply that to your work. Apply that to your magic. Apply that to everything in your life. It's all about feeling. Anyway, guys, this is D.H. Thorne. I hope you guys liked this video. I hope you guys found it helpful. I hope you learned something or at least found something that you needed to be reminded of, perhaps. If you like my work, you can, of course, like, share, and subscribe. You can comment below. If you want to help me out financially, the links in the description are excellent places to start. I have an Amazon bookstore page where you can buy my first two books. I have more coming. Uh, it's taking me a little while because I want to make sure they're equally good quality and I have enough content for them. You can also sign up for my Patreon. And if you really like things that I do artistically, I have tapestries, I have ritual cloths, I have everything you could possibly need that is based upon my work and my interests. So check them out at the Teespring store, which is also in the comments below, I mean, uh, excuse me, the description below. Anyway, guys, until next time, mind the shadows.